Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for joining me. My name is Christian Lidiard, and joining me live from the Yellow Pages head office in Melbourne is Michael Watkins. Hi, Michael. Hello. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. Now, Michael is one of our digital specialists. He leads our digital capability team nationally and uh, is Google accredited and actually is a certified practicing marketer with some 15 years experience. So Michael's gonna join us today to help uncover some new opportunities that can hopefully help you as a business owner grow. Uh, so thanks Michael, it should be uh, pretty exciting for the next 25 minutes. Absolutely, and thanks for um, not calling me a nerd. That, that's a good one. No worries. Now Michael, we're gonna talk about a number of things, but before we do, I just wanna shout out to our sales team across the country. So we, we have uh, up to 100 different businesses uh, joining us today, and each of those businesses has one of our salespeople with them. So it's afternoon now in Melbourne, but we do have our team over in Perth joining us, and of course it's still early in the morning. So welcome to our Perth customers and our Perth sales team. And then we have our team right across the country, throughout South Australia, uh, in regional markets across Victoria, New South Wales, Queensland, and of course the capital cities as well. So big shout out to the team as well. On YouTube, you'll notice that there is a, uh, a feed down the side or a, or a comments box. If you have any questions throughout the presentation, feel free to note them down in those boxes and we'll make sure that we have an opportunity towards the end to answer some of those questions together. Now, Michael, my first experience in business was actually all the way back when I was a kid, uh, when I was about eight years old in the late 80s. And uh, one of the things that my brother and I used to do is actually door knock. And we used to knock on doors, about 100 doors, before we actually got somebody that was willing to give us an odd job. Uh, and maybe some of you out there had an experience like that. It was hard going, um, but it was pretty simple. We quickly evolved that business, and we realized that we could do more if we went to where customers were. So we found ourselves at the local shops. Now, back then I lived in Canberra, so for those in Canberra, I used to go to the Flory shops, and I would wash car windows as a kid, and this was around 88. And uh, we would basically go up to people and ask them if they wanted their car windows washed. And my brother and I were onto something and all of a sudden we were uh, quite motivated. We were raising good amounts of pocket money. Uh, mine was generally spent on lollies, but uh, he was really good and wanted to raise money for, for projects and bicycles and things like that. It wasn't before long that other kids in the neighborhood caught on though. And all of a sudden, one of the things that we experienced was having competitors and all of a sudden things for, were far more competitive for us. And I guess for small business across Australia, this happens too, right? We may have been in business for a long time and all of a sudden it can get a bit tricky and new competitors into the market. So in that instance, what we did was we sort of iterated our business. Mm -hmm. And the way we differentiated ourselves was through customer service. So when we used to go up to cars and we'd say, would you like your car windows washed? We'd actually say, uh, whatever price you think it's worth. And for us, that was the differentiator. And I guess this gives us a good example of how business needs to evolve. Uh, it, it wasn't too, lo too, too long ago that marketing a business and being found was quite simple. You could literally have your uh, business open, you could have uh, some street signage, an open sign, and add in the yellow pages and your phone would ring. But things have really shifted now, Michael, haven't they? So talk to us a little bit about how the marketing landscape have shifted and how consumers are searching today. Yeah, you're absolutely right. The, um, it did used to be simple um, and that made it a little bit easier to, to make decisions, but the reality is, is that it's fragmented, it's mm. changed, it's diversified. Um, with that brings a lot of complexity, which is where um, you know, it can be often a pain point, but that complexity also brings a huge amount of opportunity um, to really pick and choose the pieces of that complex digital landscape that's going to provide the benefit to your business. Yeah. So one of the things that remains true when it comes to uh, the way consumers and businesses sort of interact is the purchase funnel mm -hmm. or the buying funnel. Absolutely. Uh, and this was a concept that was uh, originating from, I think, the late 1800s. So it's about 130 years old, this concept, and it really hasn't changed a great deal. So how do you see the path of purchase, um, you know, changing and, I guess, if we look at the very top of the funnel, you know, it was all about creating awareness and that's where things have really become quite different today. Yeah, um, I suppose firstly, you know, if, if you're watching this, you've probably seen a version like this. There's, there's lots of different versions and, and it is old. You know, human behaviour hasn't changed much, um, but expectations have too. So when I look at a funnel like this and when we look at the sales process, it basically can be broken down into three parts. The first part is, that awareness stage. Mm. Um, that's about uh, connecting with people. 
um, that may not have known that your business can provide the service before. The middle section is the consideration. So when people start to actively um, look for a service or a solution to their problem, yeah. that's an important stage. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. And then at the end of it, it's transactions, it's dollars and um, repeat transactions there as well. So I think the, the best way to think of the funnel is to look at it like um, a funnel. So you wanna go wide um, to introduce your brand to as many new people um, or to people as often as possible to then allow some of those, um, when they do have a need, to choose you. Yeah, so for those of us joining it, joining live, from a, from a traditional sense, that would have been things like mass media in the past and yep. newspaper ads. What yep. other traditional things would people have used to sort of create that initial awareness? Uh, the, the big winners were things like radio. Radio is a really good example. If you think back to when radio first um, started in Australia and, and the world, um, you know, the whole family would gather around the radio and, yep. and, and listen to the whole story and, mm. and it would be a very linear um, process. What we're seeing too is um, this funnel, um, whilst it, it filters all through to transactions, it's not linear anymore. Um, people can jump around a few of those different stages and that's where you want to make sure that you don't have any holes in that mix. Yeah, great. What we're going to do now is take a look at a video to give us a sense of what consumers are doing today. So let's throw to that now. People ask us all the time, how do I get into work? So as you can see from the video, we no longer go online, we actually live online, Michael, and, and Google coined the phrase last year, micro moment. So, mm. so what is a micro moment? Yeah, and, and thanks to our friends at Google, they're probably overcomplicated a little bit there. Um, thinking back to that funnel, uh, Google did a study a few years ago, which was really interesting in the sense of, it looked at how many times does someone touch a brand before they make a decision. Yes. And there used to be a rule of thumb about three, you may have heard, touch me three times and then mm. you'll make it the purchase. But um, they found that that number had exponentially grown. In one year it had doubled, and we're now talking on average about 11 touch points for brand. Um, and part of that too is, the Micro Moments video that you just looked at really talks about being seen in the moments that matter. So. Um, as we have got more digital um, and our behavior hasn't changed much, but our expectations on what happens on digital has changed a lot. Yeah. So we, um, we basically have shorter attention spans and we're more likely to start a search, stop a search, start a search, stop a search. And that can then um, mean that you as a business, if you're trying to keep in contact with that customer, you can lose them if you focus on um, too tight Yep. Um, an advertising program. And, and it's very much uh, that we're multi-devicing today. So, I mean, the average Australian uses their smartphone something like 150 times per day, mm -hmm. which uh, in some instances may be low. You may be using your phones a lot more. And today we've certainly uh, surpassed our digital internet consumption more than we spend on traditional media like television and radio. Yeah, so, you know, the average Australian is spending something like 25 hours per week 
online and connected on the internet. Yeah, and I think a big part of that too is that the the content and the experience and the type of things that you say to your customers is getting better online as well. Yeah. You think of your own behaviour in the 150, like that's the average. So yes, some are low, but there's some way above that as well. I know myself, you know, my phone is my alarm clock. Uh, it's the last thing I look at uh, in bed. It's the first thing I look at in the morning. And, and across device search, often I'll start a search in bed before I've got out of it because it's something that I've probably forgotten from the day before. Um, and then I'll finish that when I'm at work. Yeah. So one of the things that we sort of look at is trying to simplify the message. And a part of that is seeing that advertising really falls into two categories. Yeah. So one of them we call passive advertising and the other is called active advertising. Mm -hmm. Now passive are all the things that you do to create awareness about your business. So in that traditional sense, it's things like television, radio, billboards, mm -hmm. maybe letterbox drops. They're all about you getting your message out there, but not everybody that needed that at the time may have actually selected you. Uh, perhaps they simply weren't in the market for that. Now active advertising, of course, were those things that we uh, use when people are ready to connect. Yeah. So it's literally like they've got their phone in one hand and the wallet in another. Well, they're ready to buy. Yeah. They're ready to buy. Absolutely. And, and I guess in the most traditional sense, that was the Yellow Pages print directory. Mm -hmm. But today in a digital landscape, that's very much things like uh, Google AdWords and and uh, and directory type sites online now, isn't it? Yeah, and, and you can get pretty nerdy in this space and you can go very complex. And absolutely, we put a lot of bells and whistles in how we execute. But yeah, if you think of these two as the most important parts to that funnel, yes, um, you'll do well. You can't have one without the other, um, and it becomes a really simple numbers game as well mm. um, once you start building a plan. Yeah. So, in terms of thinking about the plan, what is happening in terms of the online marketing uh, landscape here in Australia? So, talk to us a little bit about the expenditure and what the big guys are investing there advertising dollar on today to really cut through to the audience to make sure they're maximizing uh, that active advertising investment but also the passive so we're not for any moment suggesting that you should do one over the other it's about having the right blend here so tell Absolutely. us what, the, what are the big guys doing yeah so for starters the Australian marketplace um, has transitioned yes. into a, a digital led um, uh, economy so mm -hmm. we're, we're now at 7.6 billion dollars worth of online advertising spend and that's broken up into some of your your big players like your Google search etc and directories as well as things like display which is what we want to talk a lot about today um, the fastest growing section is definitely that general display video and mobile space yes. where we've seen a 43 percent improvement or increase in in expenditure um, since last year and and one of the things that is I'm really excited about the display space in particular for small businesses is that we now have the technology to make it possible to be effective in that space. It used to be reserved for the big brands like uh, Coca-Cola, uh, all of your automotive industry. Yes. Um, you know, they were really the only ones who could leverage it because they needed that scale. Um, but now with really smart technology, we can make it really precise and really pinpointed to help join the dots in that funnel digitally to help get more transactions. Okay, so digital display is really about helping people find your brand and exposing them to it. So it is about creating awareness, but one of the benefits that you've just sort of outlined is that you can reach an audience that's more relevant to you. So let's let's start with the simple stuff first. Mm -hmm. So what is digital display advertising in its simplest form? Uh, I'd call it banner ads. Um, so banner ads is like having a billboard and picking it up and putting it in front of your customer's face. Um, the, the type of sites that we look at um, comes back to what we saw in that micro moments about people consuming content online. Uh, people go online to sites like news.com.au now to read the news. Yes. They go to Better Homes and Gardens for inspiration and ideas. Mm. Um, they spend a lot of time dwelling on this content and absorbing it and uh, banner advertising allows you to position your brand um, in those spaces where people are spending the time. Uh, no different to how you would sit around a radio when radio was um, at its peak. Yeah, so the banners can come in a variety of sizes, right? Mm -hmm. So not only is it general display that can appear on prominent websites and help create awareness, but there's also a social aspect mm -hmm. and a mobile aspect as well. So we might put an example of what that can look like on the screen for you as well. So we've got an example now of uh, web advertising yep. as well as social as well as mobile so talk us through the different platforms that this can appear generally 
Yeah, absolutely. So uh, things like mobile is a, is a, is a booming place. Um, and you can see that in, in the bottom left example, which is the strip. Um, you may have noticed when you're playing things like Candy Crush and all of these different apps that people are using, we have the ability to mm. have your brand appear in that space as well. And there's a lot of, um, like Spotify Freemium and, and such, there's a lot of apps out there where you do have that reach and that opportunity now where you didn't have it before. Social media, it's huge, right? Um, we, we, we've recently launched the Census Social Media Report. Um, one of the big things there is the, the, the rise of Facebook and how much time they're spending on that site. Um, that's another opportunity to leverage another audience set, another mindset, and another time where someone's at a point of um, either becoming aware of your brand or starting that transition into the active state. Yep. And that's where we want to continually connect with people. Mm. So why don't we look at um, a couple of case studies. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's talk about some specific examples that the Census has been running. So we offer the digital display properties, and uh, one of them that we've got on the screen for you now is WNS Security. So here's an example of a customer, and these are over the last 30 days. Yep. So just talk us through why they'd be focusing on this and what those results sort of mean. Yeah. So um, for the security doors and screens, one that you can see on the screen, there's a couple of things going on here. One is that um, we're always making sure that there is a call to action. Um, so we're introducing the brand and introducing the reason to buy. Um, because in that funnel example and in the micro moments example, you can't be sure at what point of that purchase decision the consumer's at. So the opportunity here is to have it appear so that if they're at that point, it's going to allow them to act. But if they're not yet at that point, it's starting to make it more likely that they'll convert later because they're already more comfortable or familiar with your brand. So this can work in a number of different uh, industries and verticals, um, and you think of things like professional services, where you know solicitors and accountants, yes. you know, part of that uh, real estate as well. Part of that exposure is about repetition of being seen in those places, um, and what we can do with display is um, target it to those places that people are more likely to respond to. So one of the things that I'm seeing, Michael, is that you've got. You know, you've got a number of impressions there. So essentially with display advertising, mm -hmm. it's about reaching an audience. But one of the real benefits is that you're able to get those actions or meaningful actions, which wouldn't have existed in the traditional setting. Yep. So you've got, in this example, uh, a business that has been able to display an ad and create awareness 75,000 times in a month. Yep. It's actually been able to generate 166 actions that from a traditional setting just wasn't possible before. Yeah, and the, the engagement's great too. So um, there's a number of different ways that someone can act, but you're, you're right, it, the top of the funnel is big and wide for a reason. You want to be seen by lots of people and you want to be seen multiple times to help that decision process. Home improvements is another really good example. Home improvement decisions don't necessarily get done um, like an emergency. Now, yes. Sometimes they're thought out over, uh, you think of a renovation or, a, or an extension, it could be a number of years mm. from when someone was starting to become familiar uh, right through to um, making the decision to go to the bank, get the finance, then choosing a provider. So if you're in some of those big ticket items as well, there's an opportunity for you because you may have been able to touch the consumer a few times yes. so that when they do jump into that more active state, uh, you, you've sort of half sold yourself already, yeah. which is a really good opportunity. And then at the flip side, um, there's some cool technology we can do right down for those more of those emergency situations where they're being really responsive. A simple example for that is um, someone could visit your, your website and get disrupted, like um, uh, have to go move to a different room or uh, maybe the kids start crying and they stop that search. But then the display can retarget them and bring them back to considering you to solve that problem. Yeah. Um, so it helps. Let, let's touch on that, Michael, because that's something that a lot of people would probably be familiar with, but may not understand the technology behind mm -hmm. that. So, I'm sure you've been at home before for uh, for you out there, and you've probably been on something like Facebook, and you may have been on a website before, and then all of a sudden you've noticed that ads have been represented on your Facebook profile from an ad that you may have visited somewhere else on a website. Um, some great examples of shopping sites or businesses yep. like Bunnings or The Good Guys mm -hmm. are really common and they sort of draw it back. So um, talk to us a little bit about what retargeting is and how and the different ways that can benefit somebody. 
Yeah, it, a big part of it is about protecting um, your potential customers. Um, so what we do from a technical point of view is we'll uh, drop what's called a pixel on, on, on your website so that someone who has come to that website as part of that decision process, um, we can then repurpose your ads um, to that same person to help convert. Uh, another, another really good example too is that um, the active search might come back through something like Google. Yes. So they might have uh, made a decision to get the task done but not quite locked down um, whom is going to get it done. Yes. Uh, and then you have an opportunity to, to um, leverage some of the search engine marketing yes. in parallel with display uh, to get a better chance of conversion as well. Yeah, so this technology really comes in that really maximizes the opportunity and, and the reach as well. Yep. We've got a question um, from Tony and our Geelong team. So the mm -hmm. question was, should the message be targeted around an offer or more generalized in some of the messaging? So what would you recommend? Um, I would recommend you play with both, is, is the simple answer. Absolutely, really good point. So what is it that the consumer is looking for? So we talked about micro moments. Yes. We talked about different needs. So um, if you're, and I'll just use some examples that we have on screen. There we go, pick that one there. So that auto, auto barn one, um, that's a, a generic one which has a call to action. So that's about proximity. Um, yes. It's probably really locally targeted. Um, and they're just doing a brand campaign. So if you're looking for that business, they've just connected with it. If you have a need, and we saw a dog example earlier on, you might want to talk just to the dogs and the dog owners. Yes. Um, so there's an offer that's on the screen for the security doors because that business um, has security doors which have dog latches on it. Um, offers always are more effective, but uh, you can see on that page that it's in social. Um, so one of my favorite ads is the social carousel, which is that one there. And that one actually allows you to have a few different messages yes. appear. So um, call to actions absolutely every time. If you have an offer, you should be testing it. You should be putting it in. Sometimes you might not want to put in a price point. That's okay, but definitely play with the ability of having a couple of variations in there from those two different ends. Yeah, and of course seasonality uh, and the benefit of having these display ads with seasonality means you can change them frequently. Absolutely. So, yeah. so unlike uh, some of the traditional media where you may have printed 100,000 flyers, the ability to change your message to suit your business is, is there, right? The ease for people. Yeah, most businesses will have a core set of needs that they're satisfying. So think yes. about when, when people call your business, what are they asking for and what is it that you're saying to them that's gonna get them to transact with you? They're the same sort of things that we wanna make sure in your call to action and in your branding. Yeah, great. So Michael, just wanna talk a little bit more specifically now about what census can provide. Mm -hmm. So we might put a slide up to support that as well. So the big advertisers used to use banners all the time and yep. one of the benefits of what census has recently brought to the market is the ability for small and medium enterprise to really take advantage of this technology in a very sophisticated way. So talk us through some of the five key points about why uh, Census could be the ideal partner for our customers today joining us. Yeah, um, so there's two reasons. One, one of the big ones is about technology and the other one's about the way we wrap it around a integrated solution, right? Um, so thinking back to the funnel, a big piece is having a mix and this is a big piece for a lot of businesses who haven't started the awareness advertising in a digital point of view. Um, the benefit of doing it in digital, like with display, is that you have more control Yes. and you, you generally get it, uh, more reach at a cheaper price um, and you generally have more conversion metrics to look at as well. When we talk about the technology, I touched on uh, Coca-Cola and the big players. Um, people might come to 9.com.au um, from all over Australia. But with our technology, what you can do is you can target it to just people who are close to physically where you are. And that's a big game changer um, for small businesses who weren't able to do this effectively in the past. Yes. Um, the other piece of um, technology that is super beneficial with our display offering is around um, the reporting and that pixel. So being able to integrate it with other types of advertising to complete that path to purchase is a really good um, benefit. And my final favorite part of the technology is the fact of how simple it is. So we have a really good user interface where you can build with your media sales advisor a campaign. You can play with the call to actions with them. You can design 
um, the headlines and what sort of emotional messages and you can then deploy that. Um, we have a way that deploys it in the right size on the right platform to get the maximum amount of um, reach for you um, so that you can be in front of the uh, right customers at the right time. Awesome. Uh, I think that gives us a really good sense of why Census would love to, to partner with the businesses and customers joining us today. I might just uh, give the team an opportunity to write down any questions they might have and uh, we're going to wrap up in a few moments but then I'll throw back to the team who can provide you with uh, some examples of what digital display and banner advertising could actually look like for you. Census in a nutshell and the Yellow Pages digital display offering is all about being seen online and helping you connect with the right audience. You can be considered and you can also make sure that people see your message on a constant basis and of course be chosen which is all about making sure that you get that strong activity mm -hmm. and driving the activity back to the to the metrics that matter for your business. So that could be things like uh, phone calls or of course visits to a website yep. to create that awareness. And at the end of the day there there's the two parts. There's uh, you know, dollars in the cash register so new transactions but also the opportunity to get more repeat transactions as well. So don't think about this as just net new customers. This could be getting your existing customer base to purchase more. Of course. Michael, any final comments on, on why digital display uh, is an opportunity for small business today or, or even any forecasts that you see coming down the stream and how this might evolve? Yeah. Um, what we're seeing is uh, more program programmatic advertising. Um, so what that really means is, is that we're able to really join this technology together to get it to work really efficiently and really effectively if it's part of the mix. So my key point would be uh, don't think that there's a one trick pony out there anymore for digital advertising. Yes. You need to have a, a mix of a few different pieces um, or you're just missing out on the opportunity. The second main point too is always think back to your customers and that consumer journey. Uh, you talked about that that funnel hasn't changed for 100, 100, over 100 years. Yes. Um, all that's changed is what we can do to help you connect with your customers in those different stages. You don't need to have a 20,000 um, fragmented point. Um, there's some pretty complex funnels out there. Yes. There's three main zones, and it really re revolves around that active and passive mindset. Yeah, great. Thanks for joining us, Michael. Of course, Yellow Pages has been around for a very long time. In fact, almost 130 years today, helping small business in Australia thrive, and that's what we're all about. So I'm going to throw back to the team now who would love to show you an example of what digital display advertising can look like for your business and help you identify some opportunities that might just help you achieve your business goals. So thank you for joining us. Also today, one final comment uh, is that our sales team have a special offer for today only. So if you're interested, uh, please talk to the consultant who will show you what's available to help your business thrive. Uh, we're going to jump off now, but we will stay on the line. So if anybody has any questions, feel free to write them in the chat feed and uh, we'll respond to them over the next few moments. But we'll hand back to you now. Enjoy the rest of your Friday and have a great weekend. Thank you. Thank you.